Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, I've been on the phones with different people as they walk, work out with different teams and trying to figure out where I see how this is playing out. Um, and, and the good news is they're all six going to be drafted. It's a matter of where they, where they will be drafted. I think it's pretty clear that um, Anthony will be the one pick. And then from there, you know, I think Michael will be next and I think Terrence will be next and then how does it play out with those other three? Um, I think all three of them are in great shape. They've proven themselves. Now they got to do it again. You got to go work out. You got to show you're in great shape. You got to show that you you're chasing something special. And uh, I believe they will. So I will be there for the draft. Um, the stuff that I'm doing with the Dominican team, the team will leave on the 15th to go to Puerto Rico. I will, will not go to Puerto Rico. I'll, I'll probably go down for one or two days. And then I'll go to the NBA draft. And then after the draft, I'll meet him with Caracas. So I'm not, you know, going to be the 24-7 that I was a year ago. I, told, I explained that to him. They still want me to do this. So uh, yeah, we'll have him mostly down in Puerto Rico. And Rod Strick will have him down there, too. You get a feel of how many would hold the first round? Too early, these guys are trying to well, my hope is all six, um, but I don't know. You know, I, I, you know, I would be surprised if four are not. I, I would say four are locked, and the other two got to go work out. And, um, somebody called me the other day about Darius, and he had a great workout. You know, so the team liked him. And a lot of people like Darius, um, based on the fact of how he played, how he sacrificed, uh, his skill set, his size, you know, they like him. Um, but you're, you're seeing teams now in the NBA, they're not talking about isolations and all that, they're talking about a team. You see Oklahoma City, um, who decided to come here and work out before he's helped them pretty much, wouldn't you say? <laughs> and that is their playing like a team, and so is San Antonio. And, you know, Boston and Miami, they're just, they want, they want to be great teams. And uh, so they want players like Darius Miller that they know will be a great teammate. Cal, so many new guys, how important will these, these workouts be, these one-hour workouts that you're able to get with people? Uh, think about what I'm saying. Two, two one-hour workouts a week. Let me say that it's better than no workouts all summer. Um, but I'm more concerned about them getting in great condition, uh, physically getting stronger. Um, we'll, we'll put it in a dribble drive, uh, but the reality of it is, you know, the, the way you get better is every day you're working at it, then a day off, and you come back every day, this is like sprinkled in. And, um, so it'll help some, but it's not going to have the, you know, the impact everybody thinks. John Terrence came back to get a ring, which he accomplished, obviously. There's still speculation on the web everywhere about whether he actually helped himself with regard to the draft. From what you're hearing, did he help himself? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, he's in a better position. Um, you know, we had a good idea of where he would have gone last year, and he's in a better position. And the, and the other side of it is <coughs> he knew he wasn't ready to go. So, he helped himself. Came back and he's now mature. And, um, he helped himself, no question. John, some may ask, uh, what is your motivation for coaching the Dominican team to a second year in a row? Um, well, they asked me. I kind of gave them outs to say no to me. That I can't go to, you know, I can do the Puerto Rico thing for a couple days, but I can't be with the team the whole time. And and then you know, the, some of the guys called me and you know, wanted me to do it, and so, um, and I'm enjoying it. I mean, you know, everybody says, you got to slow down. I, I will when I retire. I don't know what to tell you. I only know one way, and I've been this way my whole career. Everybody, when I was in Massachusetts, when I was in Memphis, and now here, um, you know, have two or three things going at once. If I didn't, I'd probably be bored, but this is good. Like today, we're... Del Harris and I are going over pick and rolls last night in my mind or in my home. He's going. He's we're arguing back and forth, and uh, obviously he won because I changed some things today and it worked. And he's looking at me like, "Yeah, that's right." 
and it was good for me. I mean, it's good to, to see it, and uh, um, it's another challenge of trying to get a team together in a short period of time, and, and this one's hard. I mean, last time we, we had a chance to go to the Olympics, and we just, you know, we're a couple buckets short. Now, you have Lithuania, you have Greece, you have Puerto Rico, Venezuela, in Venezuela, FIBA basketball. Don't play them, okay? That's on one, and then you have Russia, Macedonia, New Zealand, you know, I mean, there are now legitimate, legitimately, you're like, whoa, we're up against it trying to make it. So it's gonna be really hard. This will be way harder than the stuff we did in Argentina. Good news is I think we're a little bit ahead because I have a better feel for what I'm doing with this group. Now, does that translate? I don't know. When you're playing a team that's really good, it may not translate. I may say we're way better, but that team there just kicked us because they're way better than we are. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll get enjoyment out of it. And, you know, hopefully we do something unique and special. It's always fun to do coach the team and they say, well, they've never been to the Olympics, they've never done this, they've never done that, and you're trying to get that national team started. And again, I'm not, it's not something that uh, I'll do. I'm, I'm, I would like to see Orlando be that coach of the national team. And hopefully there's a ground uh, floor that's been set that now they understand what they have to do to make sure that they have all the players they can getting young kids to get passports by the age of 16. See, in Puerto Rico, you don't have to do that. If a young man can prove that he has any uh, heritage, Puerto Rican background, he's good. He could be 19, 20. Dominican Republic, he could be in the United States and his grandmother and grandfather were citizens from DR and his parents were. But he's in the United States and never got a passport. So he's 19, can't play for us. Now if he was Puerto, Puerto Rican, he could. But Dominican, he cannot. So they have to get ahead of the game and get as many kids' passports early. You know, it's stuff that they're doing now that they did not do a year ago. So, Cal, you've done this. this you can, oh. <laughs> you, you've done this obviously two summers. You did some work, I think, as a consultant with China. Would you have an interest in getting involved with USA basketball? Or something? Yeah, but you know, again, I everybody says that and a lot of it's because how many players we have out there. You know, you know that having some success in FIBA, but there are a lot of quality, qualified coaches. And, and uh, I don't think any of us coaches would say no. I mean, to have an opportunity to coach for your country is, is the ultimate honor. Um, but I'm not, I wouldn't be mad if they, you know, because there are people out there that are quality coaches and more than qualified and probably more qualified than me. Um, but, you know, obviously that would be quite an honor. Well, I don't know how much you can even talk about this, but if you can, the unique experience of coaching a guy that you're recruiting or coaching on a national team in the summer of his sophomore and junior year? I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk. Can I talk to him about a guy on my team? Yeah. Who said so, yes? You won't tell. You can talk about players on your Dominican team and reference to them. <laughs> well, I mean, have we opened up practices for the media? They're coming tomorrow. I mean, you'll see. I mean, either he deserves to play on the team or he doesn't. I mean, he's he's a, he's a good player. I didn't know who he was a year ago. I didn't know who he was. You know, everybody said it's funny how when I do this with the water, and then you say, you know why he did that with that water, or I coach this. And you know why he's coaching that, and everybody has an opinion. And, they know what's in my mind. It's amazing. You all know what's in my mind before I even figure out what's in my mind. He is a player who's, who's a good player that I did not know um, a year ago, didn't know anything about. Um, and uh, he's a pretty good player. So he's, he's young. Will he make the team? I don't know. He's, he's 16 years old. Now he's 6'10 and, you know. But he's getting he's getting muscled right now, which is what those guys are trying to make the team. So they're trying to throw him around, and, and uh, it's a great experience for him. John, John this you is said the you first time in six years you 
you've had a point guard that was in your system the year before with Brian being able to practice. How much of a jump start will that give you that maybe you haven't had in the past that you want to start anew with a new guy right away? Well, I'm excited about it. And the other thing is, and this is why coaching this team has been good, I'm watching tape with Russia right now. And they are, are, are setting multiple ball screens on multiple players. And they're doing it on the fly a little bit. And I'm kind of looking at it saying, well, you have Ryan and you have Archie. Two basically point guards. One's bigger or one's smaller. But scoring and passing kind of point guards, and they're both on the floor. So yeah, I'm happy because I have a feel for Ryan. Not only does he have a feel, I have a feel for him. Uh, and I think he's going to be fine. He's different than all the other point guards I had. I mean, you know, everybody, how does he compare? Well, how did Marcus compare to those other guys? They were really good. He's really good. I don't know what to tell you. They were all, they were all different. John Wall's different than Marcus T, who's different than Tyreek, who's different than Derek, different than Brandon. Um, Ryan may be a little bit more of a shooter like Brandon was. Um, and, and, you know, he's not the physical, tough bulldog that Marcus Teague was, but he shoots it better. Um, you know, and it, the way we play, he's, he's gotten tougher, but he's going to have to continue. He's going to have to get stronger. Uh, but that's why he came here. John, you, you gave one somewhat one. of a generic answer a while ago in terms of why you do what you do. Why you doing this? Is, could, could it be uh, more of a calculative, uh, purposeful meaning in everything that you do? I, I don't know what um, you mean. What, what are, you, are you talking about this fantasy experience? You talk because I do so yeah, internet, uh, it's yeah, internet yeah, social yeah. media, yeah, almost everything you do. Yeah, just trying to separate from the pack. You know, I mean, with whatever we do, Dwayne and I, we'll sit down and say this. You know, and I, we just keep separating. You know, we're, there's some things we're thinking about doing. If I said them to you right now, you'd just be, some of you would be very angry. <laughs> because we're, we're going to do some new things that are, that are, you know, that are different that you're going to look at and say, when did they have the time to think this stuff up? <laughs> and it's, again, just trying to, we're, it's different being co the coach here. And it's just try to take advantage of all the, the advantages that you have, and um, but no, it's not. I'm not. We just if we like an idea, we run with it. Some of the stuff we want to do doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, that didn't. I didn't like that. Let's, you know. John, based on your experiences coaching this team, when you talk about towns getting thrown around, what do you think it means as far as Anthony's chances of making the Olympic team? If Anthony is in great condition. Like he's really been working out, he's conditioned and ready to go. I really like his chances because they need him. He also gives them continuity in USA basketball. He'll be there for the next 12 years. You know, you, you got a guy that will give continuity. Now, he'd be the youngest player to ever play on the Olympic post pre or post dream team. Uh, they've had one other college player, but he was a senior when I mean, he was older. Um, but I, I like I like the opportunity he's going to have. John, on the Kentucky Indiana thing, in one of Mitch's statements, he said you just simply did not want to go back to uh, Bloomington. He didn't well, I, I wanted to do what Bobby Knight did, and Bobby Knight, what he ended up doing, Bobby Knight decided that he thought that the series should be neutral, and when it was neutral, it was huge, battle of the flags and all those other things, and and it, you know he was the one that made it the first neutral and. I like the idea because we had to move someone neutral. Someone was going to have to go neutral, and, and it was logical it was them. And then we couldn't really find a place in Kentucky, so to make it more, you know, beneficial to them, we said we'll play two years in your state. And but we're not having anything more than two-year contracts because of the flux of our program. We just don't want to do that. And again, you know, when we schedule, we're doing it for us. I'm not, I'm not scheduling for anybody else. We'll schedule for America. Not scheduling for America. <laughs> scheduling for us. You know, I like the fact that in 1948, Adolph Rupp played eight neutral games. 
Um, I like the fact that Rick Pitino played five and six neutral games, and so did Tubby Smith. Um, it prepares you for the NCAA tournament. The one thing that's changed, we're one of the few, if not the only program, that can go to football stadiums regular season. Well, why would you do it? Because we can. Because we can. And no one else can. Well, you shouldn't do that because it's different. It makes the purists mad. I'm not scheduling for the purists. I'm scheduling for my basketball team. And so, neutral games are good. Now, we're going to play a home game to get us ready. Non-conference for the SEC tournament. We'll play a road game that will get us ready for the SEC league play. We're going to have 18 league games, which include Missouri and Texas A&M, two NCAA tournament teams added to our schedule, and we have a Big East game. So what we're doing is what's right for our program, and, and like I told Tommy, Tommy, move on, it's done. We're good. I'm good, you're good. You have your schedule, I have, we have our schedule. I know our schedule's tough. And if you want to compare them to anybody else's schedule, do it. You know, it's, it's funny, and I said this before, I don't know why everybody thought we had to play everybody and no one else did. See, they only played us, they only played us, they only played us, they only played us, and we're supposed to play all of you. Why don't you play each other? Because. What do I mean because? Because, because, because. I mean, what are you talking about? We play, we're scheduling for us. I'm not scheduling for anybody else. And it's not mean, it's just, it's real. And the greatest thing right now, it ain't about compromising. You know, we again, Indiana, we offered a two-year schedule in their state. Well, you didn't do what they wanted to do. Okay, then we won't play. We're offering you two games in your state. It wasn't mad or mean or nothing like that. And we got North Carolina back on the schedule. We're in dialogue with Duke right now, um, playing the game. I want to play a triple header so bad. You have no idea how I want to do a triple header now. Men and women on a Friday and the football team on a Saturday and to just overrun a city. I don't know what city it would be, but you will be overrun by people. Have you had other coaches reach out to you and give kind of their insight about all these philosophies about scheduling for yourself? Yeah, they, they know we can do it, and they're like, you should. Um, we've talked to some, we've already talked to a couple of teams about triple headers. So. I've talked to Coach Phil. You guys are going to retire playing three games. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Coach Phillips got the triple header. Who? Coach Phillips. Oh, yeah. Where is that? He just said, please don't make it Notre Dame. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not what Brooks would say. <laughs> in reality, won't that be kind of hard to do with the SEC football schedule? You'd have to do it in November, and both teams would have to have an open day. <laughs> and you'd have to have the stadium available. And you have to have the stadium available in advance. It's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would be playing triple headers. <laughs> Jay Bill has said, though, and I'm sure you disagree with it, that the sport is becoming more and more about March, <laughs> less and less about everything up to March, becoming a one month sport. Matt, I wouldn't. And that kind of the end game or those kind of games helps. We, we could have played it. I don't know why we're not playing it. We could have been in the Lucas Oil playing the game. I don't know what happened. What, what they think, Indiana thinks you, that there's an obligation to students, the college They're only two hours away. Are they that poor? <laughs> they couldn't get to that building. <laughs> our students are going. I mean, our people would go up there. And listen, and, and again, I'm not scheduling for anybody else. I'm scheduling for us. And, and you know, Jerry, your, your thing, and you guys would say, well, it's about the regular season, not about postseason. You think that's true here? You can write the story all you want. Do you think that's true? <laughs> I mean, I think you think every, that's true? Every game is important. Yeah, yeah but, to, uh, okay. You know, do anything. Yeah, okay. You, you, you lose to Louisville and North Carolina and win the national title. How they feel? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, again, life has changed for you all. It's changed. I mean, it's not 
uh, I'll put it this way, for you all. Five years ago, it ain't five years ago. Now, if you didn't change, you're going by the wayside. That's what's happening in your business. Guess what's happening in college athletics? The same thing. In basketball, it's changing, and what, we want to be ahead of the curve. We want to be doing things. And if it's not able to do it with certain schools, then you do it with other schools. And that's, that's how we're doing it. And it wasn't, like I said, I understand the, we were just saying that what sat with Coach Hall last night at dinner, and he said what Coach Rupp did was play eight neutral games around the country to make the program a national program, and from 48 on, that's what it's been. He did that. It was, and I looked at him and said, it was non-traditional, wasn't it? And Coach Rupp said, yes, it, or Coach Hall said, yes, it was. And so when you do things, and they're going to be a little different, and you're, you're preparing your pictures different than everybody's and what you're trying to do, I try to keep everybody, the greatest thing about the social media is that I can keep everybody informed on how I'm thinking, not what you think I'm thinking. They know what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it, because I tell them, here's why I'm doing this. And that's why our fans have been great. They have been great. Now, you can write that their fans are all mad. Those seven are mad. But the fans as a whole are great. They're fine with what we're doing. And it's, that's what I said. It's just I'm happy with our schedule. I'm happy. I'm happy with my team right now. I like the team we have. Someone said, you know, how are we going to? Well, we're doing it because we're not having 9 and 10 and 11 players on the team. My first year I did. And you know what? That was my team that we weren't a great execution team. What did I mean by that? We weren't a great execution team. We weren't a real good team. We were good players. We weren't where we needed to be as a team. It's hard for that team. And we played 10. And then the next year we play six guys. And all of a sudden, by the end of the year, we're the best team in the country. Last year we played seven guys. Best team in the country, obviously, team and players. And so I like what we have coming back. We, again, freshmen, sophomores, and a senior. I have a couple guys that are hurt that are going to have a chance to <coughs> now show that they should be playing or not playing. And John, another question about Darius in the NBA. You spent three years explaining to us how good he could be when his motor's running and had the challenge of keeping it running. Is that an issue that could follow him to the league adversely? No, he's, here's what it is. I can't argue with him because they're seeing it. <laughs> You're going to believe me or your eyes. They're going to watch it and they're going to work him out and think either this kid plays hard enough or he doesn't. He's going to play rough or he's not. He's going to, now they're going to ask me the type of kid he is, what do I think of him. But they know, you know, I'm going to brag on my guys. There's not going to be any, anything else. Um, but this, that workout is an interview. It's what it is. Yeah, that's your interview right there. You're going to go in that gym, and you're interviewing, and you're interviewing against five other players. Does your interview better than their interview? Now they don't care that you won a national title, you played in Kentucky, or any of that. They don't care at all. And they'd rather get a kid from Louisiana Tech make it because then they look like geniuses, like they found something. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you. They, they, they're looking for the Central uh, Arkansas Scotty Pippen, who's the next one that they can say, I found him and I evaluate better than everybody else. So the Kentucky national title, everybody has seen him. It will have no effect on how they're drafted. It's going to be in those workouts. And, and, and a couple of them are pretty well, you know, they're in pretty good shape. But uh, Cal, last will all the incoming guys be here for the eight week this summer? Will they be on campus? They'll either be the eight week or the six week. So, is there any advice, Cal, that you give your guys when they're interviewing with the NBA? Do this, don't do that. I mean, I'll talk to them, but that's what their agent's job is to do. What their agent should be doing is having them in workouts, having them being trained. Um, what we what we're doing here is getting them prepared for that, and then they do mock interviews, what to say, what not to say. Um, you know, there there are times that they go in interviews and they say the wrong things, and it'll get back to me or the agent. I'll call the agent. Do you know that he's not saying the right things in here? 
you know, you, you got to make sure that he understands. But that at this point, they they come they come from being my child to now they're 24 seven with their, the people that are representing them. Thank All right, you. thanks, guys.